For the next 30 minutes, we will explore the unexplained. From mysteries beyond our galaxy, to ghostly phenomena in our own backyard, we will dive into our psychic abilities and explore everything from conspiracies to the just plain weird. Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. If the truth is out there, we will find it. But only by sheer accident. Easy, boy. Easy, easy. It's okay. It's okay. Hey, welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. Yeah, all right. Hey. All right. Good to have you here. Thank you for watching at home. Want to remind everybody, if you're watching live at 30oddminutes.com, jump into our chat room because Oddbot3000 and his good friends, Sarah and Rob, there they are. They're waiting to pass your questions up to our guest, to myself. And we want to hear what you think because we love you guys. Really, we love you guys. <laughs> All right. This is a great show, a great topic tonight. We're talking about werewolves. It's something you've asked for, and it's going to be that kind of evening. So uh, also join us on Twitter and Facebook. We're always tweeting and doing all kinds of other stuff that um, sounds dirty, but not necessarily when you really think about it. So, uh, so thanks. Um, Sarah, how was your day today? What did you do? I watched you dance and sing and microphone. Use all my stuff. Mike, see, we, this is why we rehearse. This is it. I watched you uh, sing to me while you were moving my stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> the house full of stuff. And it's Andrew, awesome. Andrew was there. This was an oddball festival today. We're going to be giving out Sarah's <laughs> new home address at the end of the show. So please stay tuned for that. Right. Um, all you folks who can go and visit and everything else. Okay, we know you love your paranormal. You don't have a lot of time for it. Neither do we, because quite frankly, in about 29 minutes from now, we're going out for beer. But until then, we want to bring you, if you had just one question to ask, the one question interview. <laughs> One question interview. Hey Jeff, I'm here at the Farnsworth Inn in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and I'm here with Melissa Segal, otherwise known as Vegan Mal. She is a animal psychic medium. So Mal, tell me, what is the strangest animal you have ever seen? Matt Moniz. Okay, thank you. Back to you, Jeff. Matt Moniz. Oh, he's the strangest animal we've seen, too. What a coincidence. Thank you, Vegan Mel. Thanks for sharing that with us. You are the best. Okay, we did get a bunch of emails in the last couple of weeks. Uh, if you watched last week's show, you know it was actually pre-recorded, which was a lot of fun. So thank you for your emails responding to that. Uh, but we did get some emails. Sarah, please tell us. We do. We got a really nice one this week. It says, Aww. just wanted to, I know, just wanted to congrats um, on 30 odd minutes, one year anniversary. In all the media, you guys are the best. The combination of skepticism, open-mindedness, humor, and the overall odd feeling of the show makes for an entertaining half hour. In fact, this old hairy hominid thinks the mainstream paranormal programs could probably learn a thing or two from your bunch. Keep up the good work, and here's looking forward to another year from the Unknown Primates. Aww. Highly intelligent person. Love Thank it. you, yes. Unknown Primates. He must what be a, a genius. What a sweetheart. That's very nice of you. Flattery will get you everywhere, of course. So, uh, very good. Thank you. Keep those emails coming. We like to hear the good stuff and the bad stuff. The bad stuff is funnier, usually. So, please do. Keep it coming. Okay, werewolves. Who? <laughs> The face. Is that man? The face. Oh my god. This is back when movies were movies. The wolf is in the house. Seal, are you all right? Yes, Lucy. You had. What Just do we like do? Just like the hair, that ghastly howl. God, he's smooth. The, Look at the him. The wolf is in this house? Well, that's what we've got to find out. He Come is on. suave. Look at that. Oh, he's got her out the door. The wolf is in the house. The wolf is in the house. Oh. Put down paper. Put that. That's a good point. All right. Hollywood loves werewolves. We always have. We love all kinds of monsters. That was the only one we could find in the public domain. Otherwise, we would have shared something really cool. What are you going to do? We have no budget here. Thanks for watching. All right. Uh, but werewolves, the, just like lots of Hollywood monsters, they have their roots in folklore and legend and go back a very long time. It's not purely a fictional 
uh, invention, and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And we have the perfect guest to do it, Linda Godfrey. She's an author, a researcher, an artist who writes about all things strange, but specializes in tracking reports of large, upright canine creatures that she calls the man wolf. Manimal, remember that show in the 80s? I just thought of that. Great show, not really. <laughs> Uh, she's written several books on the topic, including, uh, she's w written Weird Wisconsin, part of, uh, was a contributor to Weird Michigan, The Beast of Bray Road, The Hunting of the American Werewolf, live all the way from our studios in southeastern Wisconsin. Please put your hands together for Linda Godfrey. Linda. All right. <laughs> Linda, how are you? Hi, I'm great, Jeff. Thanks. How are you? Great. Thanks for joining us on 30 Odd Minutes. I, I'm sure you had lots of better things to do and you're slumming it with us no you're at the top of my list ah you're the best thanks so much all right let's talk about werewolves what what are the origins of the werewolf well the very first idea of man combined with animal goes way back to cave art and some of the earliest cities in asia minor where you find representations of people with animal heads so you knew that people were thinking along those lines even way back when. And it's just kind of stuck along with us through all the folklore of every culture around the world throughout time. And it's just uh, now, the past couple of years, become really popular in the United States. I'm not sure why exactly that is, but it seems to be enjoying a resurgence. Right. Well, there was the, the latest movie that came out uh, earlier this year uh, called uh, The Werewolf, right? Starring, um, gosh, Anthony Hopkins and Benicio del Toro. Uh, oh, we're both yes. in that that great movie that uh, that that got a, a, a strong resurgence. But don't you think there's a cyclical interest in Hollywood to these various monsters? There's sort of um, it does sort of seem to go that way. You know, I was really shocked. I was looking at an old copy of Fangoria magazine that I have that was um, hyping the Wolf with Jack Nicholson, and I was shocked to learn that it was 1994. I mean, that's, you know, really much longer ago than, than I thought. Yeah. Um, that, that seemed like it had been real recent. But um, I was also really shocked to learn that the writer of that movie was inspired by his own experience transforming into what he thought was a wolf. That really surprised me. So, all right, let's talk about a, a medical condition called uh, hypertrichosis. Um, right. This, this is a, uh, where hair grows all over your body. We actually have a photo we can show everybody. Uh, this is from uh, Lionel, the lion face man, real name Stephen uh, Brib Brabowski. There he is. Um, this is an actual disorder where, where hair grows all over the body. And, um, you know, it certainly looks like your traditional Hollywood wolf man, uh, but a medical condition, rare, but out there. Exactly. And there's uh, a family in Mexico where um, it's very widespread, and it, yet it's still very, very rare. And the key thing about this is that really all it does is make you hairy it doesn't give you a snout it doesn't give you fangs it doesn't give you dog or wolf legs you know it just gives you lots of hair so you still don't really look like a wolf you just look like kind of a hairy person right so okay so let's talk shapeshifters actual uh... the lycanthropy the 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 notion of shifting shape into an animal like you said i mean i think a lot of people have seen uh... old graphics from um, you know ancient egypt where you've got the head of a dog on a man's body and things like that. But what about people that believe they can shift? Or maybe, they, or do they know? Do people, are they aware that they're shifting into the shapes of animals? Is this a real thing? Well, I get letters from people from time to time saying, you know, don't make fun of us. We're out there, you know, we're, we're shifting. Um, my girlfriend has to chain me down in the basement once a month when the full moon comes. And hey. I ask, <laughs> <laughs> keep asking them to set up a video camera. If you know you're going to change and you're chained down in the basement, what could be easier than setting up a video camera and just send me the tape or the, the video? Right. And so far, no one has done it. I personally don't believe in the whole every core puzzle of your body, all the bones changing, your jaw expanding, you know, that kind of thing. I, I really don't believe that that's what's happening. I do pay a lot more attention to the notion of sort of a shaman type of shapeshifter where you're working with uh, something called an astral or a second body or a body dub double that is kind of conjured up and that either envelops the human body or can go on to do things and be seen by people. 
Um, or the, there's the idea of um, the earth spirit that changes into something else. But right. as far as humans changing physically into werewolves, I don't really believe that happens. So, but you're, um, you're talking about, it sounds like a lot of Native American um, beliefs. Well, not only Native Americans, um, this goes, this sort of spiritual metamorphosis goes back to, for instance, all the tales of the Middle Ages. Um, people believed that the person who was a werewolf would lie sleeping in their human form while their werewolf double went out. And the big um, tip-off was that if you shot the, the werewolf that you saw, and then you went back and found the human, um, and they had the same bullet wound or arrow wound, whatever, that then you knew that you had your creature. And, and so was this a problem? Is this um, you know, a, akin to the vampire craze where people felt that there were people feeding on the living? Or is this, uh, is this a, a different kind of craze? Well, back in the medieval times, um, werewolves and vampires were very closely related. And you go to somewhere like Romania, and the creature is sort of a combination were-vampire or, or vampire-wolf. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they tend to merge and, and change depending on the folklore of, of the place that you're at. So it, it's kind of a murky area. But the things that I study are really um, entirely different. And so what, what drew you to upright canines? What, uh, what, what <laughs> drew your fascination to that? Well, I had actually truthfully never thought too much about them. I was always interested in the odd and, and different aspects of the paranormal. I was more interested in UFOs, to be honest. And it just so happened that I had just started working as a newspaper reporter for the county paper, and somebody tipped me off to the fact that people around my own hometown of Elkhorn, Wisconsin, were seeing something that they were calling a werewolf. And I laughed. I thought it was very funny. Um, but the editor said, well, why don't you look around and see what you can find about it? And when I started sniffing around, no pun intended, I determined that uh, the people really were reporting this somewhere and talking about it, and I found out they were calling our county animal control officer, who was um, a county official, and moreover, he had a manila file folder that he showed me that was in his office that he had marked werewolf, in which he was keeping all these reports. Now, when you have a county official with a file folder marked werewolf in his office, you know, that's news. So that was when it was decided that the story would get done. And then when I followed up on these people, he shared their names and addresses with me, I realized that I believed their stories. They didn't seem like they were lying or pranking. They ranged from a single young mother to elderly people to a teenager. You know, there was no um, gender or age or, or type of person. They weren't drunk. Um, they yeah. were just normal people who had seen something. And what they all said was, I don't know if there's such a thing as a werewolf, but I saw this thing. And if there was such a thing as a werewolf, that's what it would look like. And you sent us some sketches, actually. Um, if we could pop one of those up. Um, this, is, this is taken from, the, uh, from some of the testimony of, of your witnesses? Right. This one that you're showing was the very first drawing that I did. It, was, uh, it accompanied the newspaper article. I actually started at the newspaper as a cartoonist and illustrator. And it was based on one of the witness stories. Lori Andreese was driving down this road called Gray Road outside of Elkhorn and saw what she thought was a wolf or a coyote, except it was kneeling, like a human would kneel. And it's sort of strange because uh, wolves and dogs, really, their legs really don't work like ours. Right. Not only that, it was holding what looked like some kind of roadkill in its paws, you know, like we would eat a piece of pizza. And uh, that really stunned her. She got really afraid and, and drove off as fast as she could. So I, I always call that the kneeling roadkill sketch. <sighs> and it's, it's been reprinted so many times. I did it really fast thinking, you know, a few people would see it once. And here, 18 years later, it's all over the place. <laughs> it's your Mona Lisa. <laughs> Very good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, Linda, hold on one second. We do have a question for you in our chat room. Please, Rob, tell us. Hi, Linda. Uh, this is a question Hi. from Brad Blair, and it's actually in regards to the Bray Road sightings. He wants to know if you think costume thrill seekers dressed up as werewolves might have something to do with all the sightings on Bray Road. So is it someone in a costume or thrill seeking, or is it uh, the real thing? Well, that has happened, definitely. But 
it has happened after the fact and not at the time that I can pin down to any of the reported sightings. Um, around Bray Road, I probably have um, close to 20 various sightings over the years, and none of them can be related to the costume things that I know of. I think most of those were done after the fact to kind of, you know, as by thrill seekers. And I know of three different incidents. At least one was a couple of teenage boys with werewolf masks, and these occurred after the first reported sightings. And then there was a farmer who was sick of people parking in his yard, so he rented a gorilla costume and started knocking on people's car windows. And then the third one was actually an elected official um, from the county who got a bear suit just because he thought it would be fun. But actually, it's a really dumb idea because there are people with shotguns yeah. who really would like to bag one of these things. You know, they, they don't know what it is, and yet they want to shoot it and it really could happen. The other thing is that it really muddies up the real reports that I get from people. What was the earliest report from the, from the Bray Road sightings? Well, from the ones on Bray Road, um, right in that area itself, I mean, I have sightings going back to the 1930s, but okay. the earliest one on Bray Road was in the early 80s, and it was a broad daylight sighting, and actually it was on Highway 11 just off of Bray Road, and a man who was uh, a machinist was on his way to work and saw this thing standing upright next to a log, just looking at him. And he's an outdoorsman and an artist, and he stopped and stared at it, and the longer he looked at it, the more he realized he didn't know what it was. And the thing just stared him down until finally he got so scared, he just, you know, sped away as fast as he could go. And is there a connection between uh, the timing of some of these sightings and what's going on in the media? So, for example, um, you know, right now, werewolves got hot again this year, thanks to that movie. And, you know, as you said, it's, it, it's kind of cyclical. Uh, in the 80s, my gosh, what did we have? Teen Wolf and Teen Wolf 2, and we had Manimal, the Howling. We had, I mean, sure. the, uh, werewolves were hot in the 80s. Is there, is there any kind of correlation? Well, you might think so, but not this time. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of strange because, you know, you've got Team Jacob and Team Edward with all the Twilight yeah, books. Yeah, right. Uh, people are seeing werewolves as very, very hot muscle teenagers right now, and it's very popular in role-playing games. Not only that, we've got lots of other big creature sightings. Bears are making a huge uh, foray into southern Wisconsin right now. And you would think that the combination, if it was either mistaken animal sightings or just an excited response to the media, you'd think that my sightings would be up, but actually reports are down. So um, I don't see real, any real correlation that at all. Interesting. And now what's the difference between the creature you're describing and say a Bigfoot or Sasquatch? Uh, is anyone, make, no one's making that leap? That's a great question. And some people have made that leap. And uh, I know there are a few Bigfoot enthusiasts who insist that this creature must be some misidentified type of Bigfoot. But the people who see it are adamant that it is not because when they get a good look at it and they can see the head, they invariably describe it as having a head like a wolf or a German shepherd with ears, pointed ears on top of its head, a long muzzle, a thin muzzle, not a wide one like a bear's. And um, the body is very, very different than a bear. And the legs are like a dog or a canine's wolf legs where they walk on their toe pads, whereas a bear walks flat-footed or plantigrade like humans and apes. So, um, and, and also bears have that kind of big uh, swing of, of body body right uh, below the belt, so to speak. You know, you can tell the, the shape of a bear. It's, sure. Once you've seen it, you know it. And people describe the man-wolf as being big through the chest and well-muscled through the shoulders, which is odd because um, dogs and wolves don't have shoulders, but very thin and narrow and tapered through the waist which is a real um, opposite of the bear. Yeah, right. Now, have you had any sightings? Have you seen anything that makes you think this thing might be out there? Well, I might have seen part of one at a site in Michigan. I was there with the History Channel filming in a very remote area, and several witnesses had seen a couple of different individuals. One was taller and gray, and the other one was about half a foot shorter and brown. And we were out there late at night, about the same time they had their sightings, and something was circling our spotlights, staying just out of range. And at one point, I saw 
something was gray fur across the road. I only saw like about an inch of its back, but it was vertical. And it was close to seven feet tall, between six and seven feet tall, because as it crossed the road, it blotted out a reflective road sign. One of the other witnesses saw it, too. Right. And when we measured it later, that's how tall it would have had to have been. But I didn't really see its head or, um, you know, any of its body parts, just that bit of gray fur vertically crossing the road. So earlier you said that you don't believe people actually change into wolves. You believe more in, like, the shamanistic idea, this, uh, this projection, uh, spiritual kind of thing. But how, do, how would you describe, I mean, what are these witnesses seeing that's very much a wolf man, a hairy creature? Are they seeing a projection of, of what someone else put out there? Or how do, you, how do you, you know, come to grips with both of those, you know, views? Well, I still don't claim to know for sure okay. what they're seeing. Um, I, I really think that the, the shamanistic explanation, if you're going for the spiritual angle, is easier for me to swallow. Um, you know, you can sort of justify it with, with uh, um, different ESP experiments and, and paranormal uh, investigations that have been done by others. I won't go too much into that. I cover it in, in great detail in my books. Right. But um, it, there is also a chance that it could be some sort of adapted natural animal because what these witnesses are seeing does not include any human parts. It's not like you can look at it and just make out the face of Jack Nicholson. <laughs> the Lion Chain Junior. You know, it's right. a whole animal. They see uh, fangs and the snout and, and the fur. There's no human face there. Often they see a tail. Uh, the legs, when they see them, are canine legs that you can't fake. So what they're seeing is, is pure animal, and people will say, well, how come nobody's ever found a dead one? And I think when you're talking about Bigfoot or Sasquatch, that's a really legitimate question because if you saw a dead Bigfoot or Sasquatch, something a nine-foot-tall ape lying in front of you, you'd know what it was. Yeah. But if you saw one of these things dead, I think you would just think, wow, that's a really big dead wolf or that's a really big dead weird-looking dog of some kind. You know, and it would get buried or, or disposed of and uh, not realized because the main difference with this creature besides its size is its behavior. You know, it, it's on its hind legs, it's using its forelimbs in ways that we're not accustomed to seeing canines use them, and it has a sort of insolence and nonchalance of, around humans. It scares people a lot, but has never hurt one, as far as I know. So, you know, it's really quite a different thing than your Lon Chaney werewolf. Yeah, interesting. All right, Linda, we do have another question for you in our chat room. Sarah? Yeah, Linda, we have one from Veritas Project. Uh, they want to know if you think there's a relationship between the Wisconsin werewolf and the Wendigo I'm myths? sorry, I couldn't hear no you No problem, that I got it. The, uh, so is there, a, is there a relationship between the Wisconsin werewolf and the Wendigo of uh, Native American lore? That's another good question. And the Wendigo is something that I've studied and written about uh, at great length. I've written about it in a couple of the uh, Chelsea House series of books that I did, um, as well as The Beast of Bay Road and, and Hunting the American Werewolf. And it's, uh, uh, the Wendigo is a creature widespread in the stories of all uh, tribes with Algonquian-based languages, Cree and uh, it is one, the Canadian Cree. And the thing is that it's a story of a of a, uh, a creature related to hunger and to sometimes enforced cannibalism in the North Woods, you know, when there's nothing else. It, it is a way of explaining that sort of thing, and it varies. It doesn't really look like a wolf standing up. What it looks like in most of the stories, with a few exceptions, is something very tall. It can be like twice as tall as a human or as tall as a tree, uh, made of ice, usually uh, the hero of the story will melt it down, and inside of it will be either a curled-up baby or a human that they recognize as someone that left their tribe and went into the wilderness and has been catching people and eating them. So it's really kind of a different myth or story in most places. Um, it seems like a very handy thing to glom onto. Here's a Native American uh, story that sounds like what we're talking about, but I really don't think that it intended by uh, the storytellers to be that at all. However, uh, some of the Native American people of various tribes, the Ho-Chunk for one, that I've talked to and interviewed, have said that they know about
about the man wolf creature. Um, it's in their tribal lore, as as is Bigfoot, and that they see both of these as spirit creatures that can travel back and forth between the spirit world and ours at will. And that's why you never find a dead, dead Bigfoot. They can get away when they want to. And that these things are very ancient and uh, very uh, not spoken of very lightly. Right. Okay. Now, are these things showing up in other states besides Wisconsin and Michigan and, and the Great Lakes region? Another great question. The Beast of Bray Road Thanks. has that title because, <laughs> because that is the spot where the first recorded sightings happened. Sure. When I wrote my newspaper story, I had to call it something. I was really uncomfortable even then with the term werewolf, and I thought, well, beast can be anything from a kitten to a dragon, so that would work well. So, and then it had this great alliteration with Bray Road, so that's why it has that title. But once that story came out, it went national in a couple of weeks, and I started getting reports from all over the country and indeed all over the world. So something very like this creature is seen all across the United States. Um, Michigan is another state with tons of sightings. I've been getting a lot of them lately from Oklahoma. Um, some of the southern, southeastern states, Alabama, Kentucky is a big one. Um, so, and even over to New York State. More come from the eastern side of the Mississippi than the western, but I am starting to get some uh, from California and uh, parts of Texas. Interesting. Now, what about the what's it? What is the, the what's, what's it? Well, I think you're talking about the Wausau what's it. Yeah, that's a great, great sketch by, I have to give props to that illustrator, Troy Therian. He's from uh, Door County, Wisconsin, Green Bay. I, he's an up-and-coming star. He illustrated the cover for my latest book. Uh -huh. And that's based on a witness sketch of um, some people who saw this thing. There were several teenage boys, and they actually saw this thing several times over several years near Wausau, Wisconsin, in a huge area of related connected marshlands and rivers called the, the Little Oak Lane River area. And I actually think that um, it could have been, if you're looking at the natural creature explanation, it could have been something like um, a, a wolf with mange, but although that doesn't explain why it's standing up. Right. But we also saw it in connection with strange lights, UFO-like lights. So that puts this particular sighting in a whole other realm. And, and so, like you said earlier, alliteration with uh, you know the Beast of Bray Road and right. you know, the Wausau Watson. We we love to you know in Massachusetts the Dover Demon. You know we we certainly Back. yeah we do love. Uh, <laughs> you need a catchy name or, or your monster will never <laughs> gain national no notoriety. Um, so uh, what else? You you, uh, you have a book coming out called uh, Michigan Dogman, or did that already come out? That's coming out this summer. Okay. It's called the Michigan Dog Man. Um, the Michigan Dog. Let's see. I have, I have to stop and think to get it right. Michigan Dog Man, werewolves, and other upright canines across the United States awesome. or the U.S. Uh, I'm told the cover. We don't have the cover art. I'm sorry. <laughs> But, uh, but that is coming out this summer. We'll have links to it from our website uh, and links to everything that Linda is doing, of course. Um, we are running right up to the end of the show here. But uh, So what else are you working on besides uh, Michigan Dogman? Are you, are you moving on to other, other cryptozoological creatures, or is this uh, going to hold your interest? Well, you know, I've written books. I've written a book on sea monsters, sea lake monsters, mythical creatures. Um, I've got one coming out on Haunted Wisconsin mm -hmm. in July from Stackpole Books. And I seem to kind of be stuck in this niche of odd and eccentric people as well and have some projects going on in that thing, too. Well, very good. Well, uh, Linda, thank you for joining us tonight. We'd, uh, we love talking about this stuff because it's so interesting how there's so many different facets to the paranormal. And one person's Bigfoot is another person's, you know, strange creature is another person's alien. And, uh, and that's one of the things we just love to explore. And also the regionalness of this, you know, how, you know being able to take it local to, to something in Wisconsin uh, that sounds similar to something seen somewhere else. It's just uh, the kind of thing we live for. So, uh, so very good. Really appreciate you joining us this week. Until next Thanks. time, folks, please stay odd. All right. <laughs>